Good afternoon and welcome to an incredibly special episode. I'm so excited. My daughter Faith reached out to this incredibly beautiful woman, Marge Sr. from the Real Housewives of New Jersey and didn't tell me. She said, Mom, I need you to go on Zoom. Something's going on. And then this beautiful woman shows up and she's like, happy holidays. And I just, I'm literally speechless, which I'm never speechless. People will tell you that. Thank you so much for making my birthday tomorrow perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this. You're welcome. I am happy to be on there. I promised Faith a while ago that I would do it. And uh, it's been a crazy uh, couple months. So I am happy that I was, I am able to do it today. Oh, and you know what? You're stunning. You are so Oh, thank you. You're going to make me blush. Oh, my cat is behind me. I see that. (laughs) You know, you have been so instrumental. I don't know how you deal with the drama of The Real Housewife because you're so different than they are. Like, you you just take it with such stride and elegance when all of the drama sets in. How do you manage that, especially when they're always attacking Margaret? Well, my daughter always says, Mom, don't get involved. <laughs> but what happens is, you know, this is funny. I'm mic'd when I'm... Um, were filmed and sometimes I always forget that I'm Mike and <laughs> <laughs> I say things mom you shouldn't have said that but you know uh off uh, off camera sometimes I will tell the individuals uh what I think uh, uh of them and uh you know several have apologized but uh, you know the next season they were the same so uh, the apology is inconsequential because they just don't really mean it Is this show really authentic or is there a lot of like acting in it? No acting at all. What you see is the way it is. There's no acting. Whatever fights they have, it's for real. Nobody is making anything up. Wow. And your daughter. It's not scripted. Your daughter is just like gorgeous. And I'm like, she can't get any more gorgeous. And then, you know, next time you see her again. Like at the reunion, I was like, okay, whatever water she's drinking, whatever she's doing, <laughs> I need to know because this woman's flawless. And I see where she gets it from. There's no question. She oh, thank you so much. You. Yes. I was watching your son-in-law, who is a riot. Oh, Nate, I love Joe. He was hysterical. He was with the other Joe Gorga. And yeah. he was talking about how they almost lost you and you had a hole in your lung. And- yes, I had a uh, uh, a problem with my lungs, and uh, uh, <laughs> it, this is uh, not such a funny story. But the thing was, I uh, I had to. I wasn't feeling well, and I told uh, the current doctor that I had at that time that you know I'm getting low grade temperature, and when low grade temperature comes, uh, you're concerned. So they put me on antibiotics. But even after I was off antibiotics, it was still there. So they said, okay, we'll do a CAT scan and see what's the matter. So I'm waiting for the CAT scan because you want it that same day. So I called the next day. Uh, We found something on your lung. It was an abscess. Oh, we'll get a pulmonado just to talk to you tomorrow. So I called my daughter, mom. She said, you are not going to wait till tomorrow. So we went to see my uh, pulmonologist, Dr. Pavlou, who is I changed, uh, he is, he literally saved my life. So he says to me, um, you have to go to the hospital. I said, tomorrow? He said, no, today. <laughs> I said, now. really? I said, I have the cats and, uh, you know, somebody had, I, I can't. So <laughs> poor Joe, who was highly allergic to cats, had to take my cat uh, to be uh, taken care of. Not at his house, you know, to uh, one of those places. And then they put me in hospital. I was on major antibiotics for three days in the hospital, intravenous. And then after I was released for six months thereafter, I was on uh, high antibiotics three times a day till I think it was October. And luckily, it's all cleared up. I have no scar tissue. But after all of that, my doctor says, um, I was afraid it was cancer, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're better and it's all gone. Yes, it's all gone. The Joes were on the couch and he was so funny. He was like, she was so elegant and she's so put together. And Joe <laughs> Judice is sitting there going, 
you checked her out while she was in bed, didn't you? And he was like, dude, that's my mother-in-law. And he goes, and he was like, well, we told her she had to get in a gown and even her gowns were, you know, fashion designed. And, and I'm just <laughs> like laughing it. And Gorga's just, you know, Gorga has that sense of humor that I know he's harmless, but he's such a riot. And he is, he's and funny. He's, he's sitting there. He's like, yeah, you checked her out, didn't you? And he's like, no. <laughs> and then he goes, Marge Sr. said, I have to go to the bathroom. And so she starts to get up and next thing I know is she's wearing like a thong and he's cracked up <laughs> and Joe's yeah, like, my uh, gown opened up in the back. <laughs> and, and, and Gorga was like, you checked her out. And he goes, dude, that's not something I want to see. That's my mother-in-law. And he and Gorga's <laughs> like, she's high, you know, and it, it's yeah. just, I love the camaraderie with the men, most, most of the men. Yes. Ah, but most of the men, I just. Yeah, Joe and uh, Frank and uh, uh, my son-in-law, Joe, they're uh, uh, friends off the show. Uh, they do a lot of things together. Yeah. And Melissa. Because they are si similar, you know, uh, Joe is a contractor and my son-in-law can do anything. Right. And Melissa seems just as real as can be. Yes, she is. She's lovely. And I love her mom and her sisters yes but the kids are great they're beautiful they, they are they are beautiful kids but she seems yes. like your daughter and and melissa seem to be the target of everybody's attacks yes i know it's just uh, but my daughter is an honest person and she says things the way they are she doesn't you know uh uh does and say anything that isn't true mm-hmm yeah yeah but she takes a lot of heat like i'm so i know but she handles it very well she's quick <laughs> she's so quick she's hilariously yes. quick but i can't believe that you know she holds her own once it gets started she very well yes always and i love it i have rewound and played again because she is so amazing but how does she put up with the attacks that she gets all the time she gets blamed for everything i know but she takes it in stride. She's a very strong woman, so she takes it in stride. And she said, Mom, it's a job. That's and that's what it is. It's a yeah. job. Yeah. You have to just remember, don't, you know, it is a personal attack, but she responds in kind, but not in a bad way. Uh, so uh, she's very good at uh, what she says. I have to ask, because I think that they did a Hollywood oops. When I watched you have your 75th birthday party, they mm -hmm. were 65, right? There's no way you were 75. There's yeah, no uh, way. 75, yeah. No. Yep. What well, you, you know, facelift helps. <laughs> but, you're, but what is your daily routine to make you look like this? I mean, and it's your inside. Aside from putting on makeup, that's about it. What? Yeah. <laughs> but your beauty inside comes out. Oh, thank you. Thank it, you. It does. I have, uh, I have a, uh, actually, I'm more of a positive person. Mm -hmm. I wake up smiling and, you know, I don't, uh, I'm uh, positive. There are days that I get uh, irritated at the office, but otherwise I'm overall very positive. Well, you're helping your daughter with her brand. No, I don't work for her anymore. You quit? Well, no, it's uh, things change. So I uh, got a job and uh, right I'll probably go back to working for her in January. Uh, but for the past three years uh, uh, during COVID and everything, I started to work for a wine wholesaler, which is like seven minutes from where I live. So I've been there for and he's closing his business at the end of the year. So uh, yeah. I'm going to go back and work for my daughter. What's it like working for your daughter? Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, mom and daughter. That's it. You know, she picks on me the way she always does. So, which is good, you know. Uh, so, um, but I have to remember that she's the boss and that's a bad thing when I don't. <laughs> it is funny though, you know, she is the boss when I work for her. So I have to keep that in mind. I yeah. really do. And I'll remember that next year when I start working for her again, that she's the boss, treat her like your boss. And then, you know, not as uh, uh, I'm not her mother at the office. Right. Are you going to be in this upcoming season? Yes, I am. Yay. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's better when you're in it. It's oh, better. thank you. No, uh, I've uh, filmed uh, several times recently, and I think there's another one 
that I'll be doing, but uh, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. You've had a very interesting life. You came over here when you were five. No, 10. 10. I thought you were five. No, no. Ten. From Hungary with your parents. Mm-hmm. With my parents. Yes. And you didn't speak any English. None whatsoever. <laughs> so what was that like coming over here? I- uh, you know, it was, uh, luckily I had my father and my mother, so, and uh, we lived in Iowa, Iowa for a year and a half, and my mother put me in a Catholic school, so though, uh, the nuns and all the kids over there were truly terrific. They took time out to uh, teach me English, so uh, it uh, it worked out very well. They really helped me. I mean, it took me a long uh, number of years to assimilate you know, totally into uh, the American way of life, because back in Hungary, we didn't have uh, indoor plumbing, by the way. (laughs) What a best thing about best thing about coming to America, besides being in this wonderful free country and everything (laughs) was having indoor plumbing. (laughs) (laughs) And you are a thriver and a survivor yourself. Yes, yes. You you I went am. through something horrific and came out the other side of it. Thank God for that. Yeah, because you know, um it's in that type of situation, it's really tough to walk away. But when it affects your child and everything else, you have to walk away, even if you don't know where you're going. I was lucky my parents uh, you know, helped me so I was able to uh, uh, walk away and put a restraining order on him. And like I, uh, I don't know whether he's alive or uh, dead, but as my daughter says, you know, we don't want him popping up right now. (laughs) But getting a restraining order back then was quite challenging and you got it. It was, it was, but surprisingly uh, uh, the, I had enough proof where uh, the police, uh, really did believe me and uh, they uh, did put a restraining order and I had uh, uh, you know a good lawyer and he knew some judges and he made sure that they did that that's amazing and then look Mm -hmm. at you so you have totally thrived from everything you yes yes absolutely and you love animals like I do I do. I love animals. I really do. You know, I've even in Hungary, we had uh, cats and dogs. And, you know, of course, living on a farm, we had uh, cows. I used to milk cows when I was a little girl. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I used to take them to pasture. And the funny thing is, we used to have to go over this darn bridge. Uh-huh. Even here in the United States, when I uh, when we first came here, I used to dream about that bridge of falling into the river. <laughs> But you must have gone over it. Because it had holes in it, you know, so it was really, it was like, okay, uh, it was a nightmare for me to, uh, but but the cows, you know, so we'd go over the, uh, go to the pasture, and then when it thundered and lightning, they just left me and came, went home. And what are your guilty pleasures now? What do you love to do now? Have ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) What's your favorite flavor ice cream? Uh... Actually, it's the uh, uh, Hagen uh, coffee bean. Ooh, I love coffee. Yeah. Or Dolce de Leche. That's my husband's favorite. Mm-hmm. I like, like those too. Thing. Yeah. And now there is a uh, wonderful uh, little gelato place that opened up here in Englewood, and they have the best Dolce de Leche. But, you know, I don't feel like paying $10 for a medium cup. <laughs> Prices are when I can get a quart at the, you know, for like uh, on sale at ShopRite for three dollars and fifty cents. Right. A pint, I should say, a pint. Yeah. Right. So you love animals, and we obviously are. You know, we give these sweet babies their forever homes, and we Mm -hmm. have our golden retrievers. And I, I'm just so like, I, I, I've probably done hundreds and hundreds of interviews, and I'm never starstruck, and I'm never anything but with you. I am, and I'm just like. You don't understand this has been the best gift my daughter could give me. Because Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Like I said, I was happy to do it because it's been a while that I promised her. Well, we watch you and she's always like, oh, mom, 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 here she comes, here she comes, this is going to be good. And it's like, you're you're so elegant and then you just like drop the zinger and it just continues. <laughs> and it's just- I love that. Uh, well, I want to always keep my promises. 
Oh, that's fantastic. So what else do you, what do you and your daughter love to do together that then involve uh, more taping? Eat food. But then how are y'all saying? Go to restaurants. Because you- lots of times when you go to, if you film or something, except that Melissa, she's great. She's just like my daughter. She has plenty of food. But yeah, usually you. when we film, uh, yeah, when we film, we have to uh, uh, stop at McDonald's. <laughs> my daughter always has to get the cheeseburger and fries, you know. Uh, and uh, I usually get the uh, fish, filet of soul. Uh, so if we don't eat enough, that's what we do. Uh, or there is this wonderful little, uh, little, it's big actually, diner uh, in uh, Hackensack. It's called Chit Chat. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, we go there because it's open 24 hours a day and they have the best food, diner food in the world that you can get anything. They even serve alcohol. You know, it's very hard to get a, an alcohol license in, in the state of New Jersey. Why? For a restaurant. I don't know, but it's really, they're very, uh, very hard in uh, allowing people to have licenses. We have a lot of restaurants is where you bring your own. Luckily, my daughter doesn't drink, so she doesn't care. Right. But Joe drinks. Yeah, Joe drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I love watching the men drink. It's hysterical. Oh, it's hysterical. They and are. now, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, is uh, uh, Frank Catania is opening up. Uh, marijuana has become legal in New Jersey, so he's opening up a marijuana shop. And how is, how is Frank and his girlfriend doing, Brittany? Oh, they're great. Yeah. She is such a lovely person. I really she's love cute. her. She's very cute. Yeah, she is. She's a very good person. She's very good for Frank and I'm very happy for them. And the, and the kids love her. You know, they love uh, Brittany. She's a wonderful person. How's Dolores? Dolores is fine. She's got her boyfriend, Paulie. Oh, she's very okay. happy with him. So, you know, and the kids like him too. So it goes well. That's great and and you know I, I guess I have to ask how Teresa is I used to love her in the beginning but now to tell you the truth I don't know how she is aside from seeing her on social media that's about all I know uh because of what happened last year uh with her and Louie what they did to my grandson and it was um, awful it was awful so I am not interested in being around her or Louie if, uh, you know, if she says hello, I will say hello and that's it and I'll walk away. But Louie, I'll totally ignore. But what I don't understand is when she went through everything with Joe or her ex-husband, you would have thought she would have learned that. I think she has a, a, a <laughs> that's her type of guy. I think he's worse than Joe Judice. I, I believe so. I, yeah, I think so. I do. I do. I mean, I she just, has a type. She has a type. Um, I, I've watched Louie um, and, you know, from my point of view, from my training and all my school and stuff, he, and this is just my opinion, so I'll make sure I say it right because, you know, he's quick to jump the handle, um, is he just seems overbearing, narcissistic. He just seems- We consider him, you know, I consider him narcissistic and, you know, he does control her. He, uh, I think he pretty much tells her what to say. Right, but the Teresa we all know was very vocal and didn't need any yeah. acting at all. On I know, but, but now he'll him, tell her uh, to be quiet. She acquiesces to his wishes. Right, like he I, tells her. I, to I wish up. her to be very happy. To tell you the truth, I really hope she's happy and nothing bad is going to happen between the two of them. But as far as I'm concerned, Louis is a non-entity uh, that I don't even want to know. Okay. Yeah, I was really shocked at him on the finale. Like, I think his mm-hmm. colors came out at the finale. Yeah. So I, uh, like I said, I wish her all the happiness. But as far as I'm concerned, Louis is just a narcissist. And for him to have threatened my grandson. Not right. No. His grand, your grandson probably, does, has he met him? I mean, there's no reason why he would go after him. My grandson is not involved in the uh, in their housewives. If they are around, he's not around. He is nowhere to be seen. He has, you know, his personal life and yeah. he will not be around any of the uh, people from the Real Housewives of New Jersey. So why not would he at all. go after somebody's grandson? That he has well, he went after uh, my grandson because he figured that's the only way to get at Margaret. 
Margaret can hold her own. I mean, I yes. her. And we uh he was reported to the police and everything else. Good. Yeah. Good. I mean, he he's like a big bully, you know? I mean, yes. he but, is. You know, like I said, bully. as far as I'm concerned, I can say this much about it as because of what he did, you know, threatening my grandson. I can literally say that. And I'm shocked uh Joe, Melissa's husband hasn't torn up in him yet. <laughs> well uh they aren't talking at all so it's but you know what um, i think good for them i mean my heart mm -hmm. broke so many times for melissa you know it i'll tell you what uh uh since he's been in Teresa's life the relationship between Teresa and her brother has Gone. totally stopped because of him so you know i feel bad for both of them because he's the only family member she has. Right. And, uh, he's the only one that shares all the uh, memories of his parents. So for her to side with him, right. I'm sorry. I think that was wrong. I, I, so I think it says a lot about the character. I do. You I'm, know? I think I, Joe is a great I do guy. Because, you know, Joe, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, he loves his family and uh, he loves Melissa's family. So it's for, uh, I think it's really sad that her, uh, Teresa and him do not have a relationship because they're the only ones who have all the memories from their mom and dad. Right. Yeah. Joe seems really like such sad. a stand up family man. He really does. He is. He's very good. He's, and the kids are wonderful. Love them totally. Yeah. And Melissa, like my heart broke. She's a wonderful mother so too. Many times. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, she is such a spot on mom. She's mm -hmm. here with her kids. She loves her kids. Mm -hmm. You can see the genuality in her when she's yes. looking at her kids and interacting with her kids. Right. But then, you know, you see how many times that she literally like bit her tongue when it came to Teresa. Yes, because their it, relationship. she was afraid to uh, mess up the relationship between Joe and uh, uh, Teresa. But she finally just got tired of it. And I don't blame her. them. They both did. So it's I think, uh, you know. Now, have you gone on any of these crazy trips with the girls? No, we don't go. They don't send the moms. <laughs> but you're not a mom. You're like one of the best firecrackers in the bunch. <laughs> no, they don't send the moms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well that trip in Ireland would have gone in the haunted house. <laughs> Oh, you know, I, I think uh, spirits are around us, you know, our uh, uh, good family members who, uh, you know, who've been our loves in our lives, you know, your parents, yeah. uh, uh, they're uh, with us all the time. And, you know, as long as we have memories of them, they're here. Yes. That's what I try to tell my granddaughter every day. I mean, my daughter about my grandparents, sorry, every day is that they're still with us and we live. Yes, on. that's why I say it's, you know, it really is. They, uh, they're with us. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, so true. Yes. Oh, if you could give it, our listeners anything, what would you say to them? Because you are just a, a breath of fresh air. I, I loved you before I had the pleasure of meeting you and I love you even more now. You are such a... a beautiful human being inside and out and i don't think that resonates enough to your character on the show thank you and my daily mantras when i do my stories is this i truly believe um because we all have issues with friends and family uh but in uh, this day and age there are so many people who have committed suicide or are in deep depression and everything my mantra every day is reach out to friends to family to make sure they're okay, that everything is going well with them. You never know what's happening. You know, if you don't reach out and something happens, it's too late. So yeah. it really is very important that you keep in touch with your family, your friends. If you can, you know, you may have issues with, uh, within your family, but try and resolve them, even if you can't. The thing is, make sure you reach out and just tell them you love them and you're thinking of them. And that's what I say about friends also. Just even if you just text them or anything, if you feel uncomfortable calling, just uh, text them and send an emoji of a heart or something to say, I'm thinking of you. That's my daily mantra every single day. I love it. And do you have like a little beauty tip for us, for us women? Uh, beauty tip, it, uh, you know, this is funny. I actually, uh, the only thing that I use 
and all the time. And I've been using this forever. I mean, it has to be at least 30 more. Olay. Regenerous. That. Really? Yeah, I use that. And make sure you wash your makeup off every night and, uh, you know, take it all off. And take vitamins. Definitely vitamins. You have to have vitamins. I use, uh, um, you know, to, I've been using turmeric for a long time and also take all the vitamins that you need because we don't eat enough of the uh, vegetables or anything to make up for it. So I take tons of vitamins, vitamin K, vitamin D3, uh, uh, you know, B12, B6, you name it. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure besides ice cream? My guilty pleasure besides ice cream? Uh, I'm just trying to think. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I truly think my guilty pleasure is uh, binge watching uh, BritBox, British TV. Really? I haven't, I, I don't watch a lot of TV other than, so I don't get a lot of time to watch TV. No, I can understand why. <laughs> you have a very busy life. Yes, but no, that's my guilty pleasure. It's Brit Box. I love uh, uh, mysteries. I love mysteries. To this day, I still watch, uh, uh, you know, Angela Lansbury. I love her. Murder, she wrote. Yeah. I watch the old shows and I watch all the, uh, you know, like Law and Order and all of that. But Brit Box is my uh, guilty pleasure. I love the English mysteries, so I binge watch that. <laughs> yes, I had a a really sweet gentleman named Robert King on not long ago, and he was the writer for the Tonight Show, and I was just like, oh, and he's like, you know, I've worked with Robin Williams, and we talked about him, and just all of those people, and he's like, you're really old school because you shouldn't know half these people, and I was like, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I watch Benny Hill. I watch Johnny Carson. I grew up on the Golden Girls. That's my era. You know, I was born in the wrong decade. But absolutely. Those are the those are the other thing I do watch is TMC because I love old movies. Oh, yes. yes. I love old movies. I love the old movie stars. I love Betty Davis, you know, Joan Crawford. Oh. Uh, all of those old movie stars. I love them. And uh, if there's a particular one uh, that's on, uh, you know, TMC, I will watch that because I truly love uh, the movies from the 40s, you know, and uh, 30s and 40s. 50s, it started to change, but uh, the old Hollywood is what I like. With your ice cream. With my ice cream, yeah. Ice cream. <laughs> You have been so amazing. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm glad. I really enjoyed it. And thank you. Uh, thank Faith for reaching out to me. I will. I will. And when does the new season come on? I'm not sure. They're filming through October. So oh. maybe March. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you so much. You oh, nice talking to me. And I will send you that information about that woman once I find out from my daughter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Take care.